Hello, Gospel Community Leaders. I hope you're having a great start to your week, and hopefully the week's just going to continue to go well for you. I'm praying for you guys. I'm praying for your Gospel Community groups. I'm praying for a great, vibrant discussion and great, vibrant, gospel-centered, deeply impacting community amongst your groups this week. I want to thank you uh, first uh, for your patience with the uh, delay in getting out some of these questions week to week, especially those of you who meet earlier in the week. My wife and I are now... um, pretty settled. We're still unpacking boxes. You can probably see some behind me, but we are we have been through a very hard season. Um, 40, 45 hours of work with the church, 35, 40 hours of work on the home uh, for about the last four uh, or so weeks to get moved in here, to get it ready. It was a foreclosure, lots of stuff to be done. And so um, that's not an excuse, but maybe you'll feel a little bit of sympathy for me as I offer my apology for... Um, getting those questions out a little bit later and my thankfulness for your patience in that so thank you guys so very much in that i want to talk about something else as well and this is important and there's two things that that need to be happening on a very frequent basis um, with our gospel communities one is discussion and one is family time and that you normally almost always is going to involve a meal and so here's why they're important a that discussion and we want this to be happening week in and week out and again there's lots of questions and so I'm trusting each of you to pick and choose the questions, ask all of them or ask a few of them and choose the ones that are most applicable to your group. But there needs to be discussion happening every single week. We want that to be happening because, again, um, there's broad application uh, of the gospel and broad application of the practical outworkings of the scripture that we, that the, the scriptures that we're preaching through at Redemption Church on Sunday morning. It's kind of this instructive time. Uh, like a lecture, but uh, and that's what uh, Paul Tripp is going to call that instructive. And then you're going to have this constructive time, though, which is you know, hey, you're sin, you're sinning here, and this needs corrected, and this is very specific correction to your life, or or here's where you can be affirmed, and how the gospel is impacting your life, and the Holy Spirit is directing you, and the power of God is at work in you, and uh, that happens in our gospel community discussion times. Um, on a very uh, real way, and uh, that becomes a huge outlet for that. And so uh, we want to go from air war to ground war. We want to go from instructive to constructive week in and week out, and we do that through our discussion times um, at Rede- uh, through our Redemption Church Gospel Community Group. So we want to be having discussion week in and week out, but we don't want to neglect... Okay, so we don't want to neglect that, but we don't want to neglect the family time either. And again, I think this almost always has to be a meal. People come together around tables. People come together around food. And there is fellowship, and there is oneness, and there is unity, and there is community there. And that lasting relationships form. And not just lasting relationships that are buddy-buddy, but in these settings, as we balance discussion and family time, relationships are formed around the gospel. Deep, lasting, impacting relationships relationships that point us to Christ, that speak the gospel into one another's lives in in deeply impactful ways. And so don't neglect the meal either. And so I've been thinking this through because my group, we're meal heavy. We tend to neglect the discussion. So my problem is, what do we do? So we get together for a meal and we start with the meal and we talk and talk and talk over the meal and there's deep friendships and a deep bond in our gospel community group, but we never get to discussion. So then the next week, all we do is discussion. So what I'm thinking, two options for my group, and we're going to go with option one, but I'm going to give you both options that we've been thinking through and praying through. Option one, the one we're going to go with, is we're going to start front-loading our discussion. At our start time, we're going to expect everyone to be there on time. If they show up late, that's fine. We're obviously not going to ridicule them, but we are going to start discussion at the very beginning of our our group, at our very uh, first and foremost start time, week in and week out, right on the dot. And we're going to have that discussion for 35, 45 minutes. If the Holy Spirit takes it longer, then it'll go longer, but 35, 45 minutes. We're going to prepare the type of meals that can be warm, uh, stay warm during this time. And coming out of that discussion, we'll move right into our meal. The reason we're front-loading it is so that, A, the intentionality of it, that discussion is guaranteed to happen because it's a little bit more structured. And then we come out of that into the less structured time, which is this community organic time. Um, But the other reason we're front-loading it is so that the parents and the families that are there, uh, parents and those with kids that are there, they can know this is the set time that the discussion is going to happen. Then we'll move into meal, and then they can leave 
as as they wish and as they need to um, have whatever the bedtimes are for their children. So that's option A and that's the one we're going to go with. Another option is this. You have that discussion. Say you meet on Wednesday evenings at 6.30. You have discussion week in and week out every single week at 6.30 okay and then you m might not have a meal you might have you know just some light refreshments but you don't have a meal and then and that's every Wednesday 630 we're gonna get together and we're gonna have discussion and then every second week or every third week or even every week on a different night of the week whether it's Monday or Friday or or Thursday there's gonna be a standing date uh, so every week that might be burdensome. You might not want to do that because it's going to tax your group too much. But maybe every third week on Thursdays, there's a standing invitation to get together at s someone's house for a meal together. And that's another way that you can do that. So you're having that discussion week in and week out, but you're also having that scheduled meal um, at a different time that people can come to. And you could even alternate that. Say Thursday nights don't work for everybody, then say, you know, this week it's on Thursday and then two weeks later it's going to be on a Monday so that everybody's kind of getting caught in that. That's another way to say I like option A better but option B uh, works too. So you guys think about that, pray about that and, uh, and uh, work towards that. Um, lastly, I just want to remind us again, uh, Song of Solomon, this is marriage, okay? So this is directly applicable to marriage, but not just married couples. So as you frame these questions and as you have these discussions, um, be sure to involve everyone who is married or has been married or is soon to be married or is dating with the goal of one day being married. Um, include them into that. It's directly applicable to all of us, but it's also generally applicable, except for the sex stuff, to all relationships across the board. So here is the, the main takeaway for this week. This is what I'm going to leave you with, and here's what I mean. This is what it says. The key to a godly, healthy marriage is two servant friends and lovers. I don't respond to my spouse the way they treat me but I respond to my spouse the way Jesus treats me. But you could also read it this way. Okay, so that is specifically what Song of Solomon is about. But generally speaking, a lot of the principles, except for the sexual ones, can be applicable to all relationships. So you could read the main takeaway this way too. The key to a godly, healthy friendship or relationship is two servant friends. They aren't lovers, but they are friends. And I don't respond to my friend or my co-worker or my classmates the way they treat me but respond to my my friend or my co-worker or my classmate the way Jesus treats me so um, just as you frame this and as you talk about this yes it's specifically about marriage and the, and those who are headed towards marriage it's very directly applicable to them but in a general way it's applicable to all relationships you guys have a great week